Hello friends. Today we are going to learn more about the Test Cafe Selector API. Selector API is quite important if you want to say for example assert a state of a particular element or you want to check a particular property on the web page that you are working on. In most of the cases the action methods for example click type text etc you can just pass on the CSS selector and it will work fine but in the cases where you need more control on the selectors you can utilize the selector API quite nicely so let's see some examples but before that let's look at the website that we are going to work with so this is hacker news it's like a news aggregator website where you will find interesting articles on different topics across the web and all you get is a very simple plain interface where you just get the links of different articles and by default as you can see in the home page it's just showing 30 links 30 articles basically so we are going to work on this web page let's find out how the links are structured so you can see it has a class a story link so if i find all the story links i'll see there are 30 examples now let's write some code so this is the basic skeleton of our test code where you have to import the selector function from test cafe module and this is the selector function that we have used here so this is the constructor where you just pass on the css selector string this is the fixture that we are creating with the page of hacker news now let's write our test code here first and foremost what we are going to see is whether the news link element exists or not quite straightforward if it exists I'll just do a console log so let's run the test cases first on Firefox so there we are web page is about to open and done it has printed out the console log so for example if you want to create a generic selector what you can do is you can just write selector and pass uh, the class name later so I'll write and I'll return the document with matching class name that's all so I can now use the same selector something like this and this should work again because I'm just passing the class name from the actual code here so it could be something different for someone else this is very simple example it could be uh, a little more complicated CSS in real life example let's run the same test again and it should work without any issue and it worked fine as expected now as we have seen that in the example website there are 30 links so what if you have to check some particular properties of link 15 or something like that there is an option so there you can filter the nodes that your DOM has using a method called nth to find out the nth element this selector will return all the elements with the matching class name so in our case it will be 30 elements with the class name story link this is the official documentation where you can see there are different options to filter the nodes the first one being nth then you can match the text you can filter based on the attributes let's write console log saying that news link and I'll change this to previous version that I had okay for simplicity so we'll just update this condition a little bit we'll check if the fifth element exists or not sorry there's a zero based index so it should be four that's working fine now if you want to match any value like a text value okay so I'll find out that link with the text as JSON so there is one link here so I'll just change it to with next JSON exist or not. And if you want to match the exact text detail, there is another method called with exact text. Rerun the test. 
all good so you can explore more on different uh, available filter options you can also search for elements in the dom hierarchy based on this methods so you can find a parent of a particular element or the child or sibling something like that and you can also utilize the find uh, method which is quite useful using a selector say as a selector so it will find all the descendants of all nodes in the matching set and filter them by CSS selector. So for example, I had to check and to check how many points were assigned to that link. So this is what it says 18 points. There's a score with class score. So I'll try something like that. So we'll change. We'll select the parent. Then we'll find and it worked fine. So that's how you create a selector using the API. So all the links will be found out, then the parent will be found, and then the corresponding sublinks will be found. Let's revert it back this. So that's all about how you filter node or search a particular node in the DOM. Now if you need to look for a certain state or property of the node, you can utilize all different properties available under this page. So you can see child element count, child node count, etc. Text content which is quite useful. We are going to use this one. Member specific to element nodes, you can find out the attributes whether it's checked or not, visible, focused, etc. Quite useful list that you can find out here. I'll share the link in the description. Let's get all the text content of the link. One thing to note is as you can see this method and properties are asynchronous. So you have to use await to obtain the elements property something like this you have to do so we'll do a console log but this time we'll just print out the news link text so we'll write await news link dot text content that's it and let's run it so you can see it has printed out the text content of the first link matching with the link here what if I need to print out all the elements that I've found out, right? So I need to iterate through the entire list. What I'll do, I'll write a for loop. I need to find out the count of the news link items. And then I'll just print out. And uh, to make it a little more legible, tweak it like this way let's see how the output will look like oops we forgot to iterate that's why <laughs> we just need to change it to the nth link and that will be all sweet so that's how you work with the selector api now as we have seen that in case if a particular element that we are trying to find out is not visible or probably the page is taking time to load by default test cafe will wait for a certain time i think the default timeout is 10 seconds you can obviously tweak that you can change it so there are different ways simple way is to provide a timeout option from the test run command line argument so say for example something like this I'm not going to run it again, but this is just for your knowledge that in case if you want to use a selected timeout, this is how you can change it. If you're working on a particular front end framework like Angular or React or Vue, then there could be something specific selected to that front end framework. You are covered in that area as well because the Test Cafe API also support the most popular front end frameworks like React, Angular, Vue, Angular JS, etc. So you can go to this page and you can find out more details on this. I will not cover in the examples. This is for your knowledge. Request you to go through the official documentation to find out more about this. From a high level, I think I have covered most of the important aspects that you probably need. Okay, I hope that was useful. We'll talk about Action API in the next video. Till then, take care. Goodbye.